You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Friday. You know what that means. That means that we are getting closer. We are but one day away from the big, the biggest Michigan, Michigan State game ever. Two top 10 teams, both 7-0. and Super excited to get into it. We will get into it with the Mackey Award winning tight end Jake Butt as he joins us every Friday here on the Lockdown Wolverines podcast. By the way, I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole. I have not been mentioning that because it's been had Joel Klatt yesterday. Like, I don't even want to mention my name. I just want to get to Joel Klatt. Today, I just want to get to Jake Butt. That's what we want to do. So uh, here we are with butthole once again, as you people like to call it. And uh, let's just get into it, Jake. Do it, man. This this is, I wish we could go. I wish we could go for hours and hours and hours about it. Of course, this is always a big game, but two undefeated teams. And, you know, I know for us Michigan fans, it seems like the program's taking a stride this year, but it doesn't matter unless you beat your rivals. So this is going to be a critical, critical game. If we can go in there and not just beat them, if we can dominate them, which I'm really hoping, you're going to really feel confident that this 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 ship is being steered in the right direction. See, you know, I was feeling really confident today. Actually, yesterday, we're recording this on Thursday for you people because you, 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 I need to tell you this because I'm wearing the same clothes. I was going to change my clothes <laughs> and I didn't do it because I still haven't recorded my second Thursday podcast. Anyway, uh, don't need people being like, why is he why is he wearing the same clothes? Uh, but anyway, I was talking to Joel Klatt. I was feeling confident until I talked to him, and he he's expecting a high-scoring game. I thought it was going to be more low-scoring. Uh, he, he's making me a little bit more leery of uh, the Michigan State offense. Uh, but I, I still, like, I, the more I was thinking to earlier, before I talked to Joel, I was like, okay, Mich- Michigan's defense is better than any defense that Michigan State has played till this point. Michigan's played... a a tougher offense theoretically in Nebraska. No, it didn't go great, but it's a good learning experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michigan state hasn't played a defense as tough as Michigan's Michigan state has played a tougher defense uh, offense in Nebraska. But nonetheless, I think that when you look at what Michigan did to Wisconsin, that tells me that there's some things that are somewhat being held back. Now the, the team will tell you we're not holding anything back, right? But in a way they are, right? They're not, they're not necessarily putting out everything, you know, that, that they're capable of because they're mm-hmm. saving some of these things. So mm-hmm. with that in mind, like, what is your thoughts, not only on the game, but just of this being another moment where we see a more dynamic look on both offense and defense like we did against Wisconsin? Well, it, it, it ultimately has to be. Um, and, and in this game, it, it's really hard because we you could typically rely on statistics to anticipate what's going to happen on a Saturday. But this is a rivalry game where you, as we've seen in years past, you really throw out all the stats, you throw out all the records. Of course, this year, um, there's there's it's a closer game with both teams playing such good football, um, both offenses playing well, defenses are highly respected across the country. Um, but I think what's really going to tell the story is the run games. You know, Michigan State has a, a very good running back in Kenneth Walker. Um, you know, Michigan happens to have two very good running backs in Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins. Um, and the thing about the run game is we, we talked about a little bit, Isaiah, is the team that's won the run game, the four, 45 out of the last 51 games, the team that has won the rushing battle has won the game. So in, in, a, in a rivalry game, I think that really matters because – there's a lot of emotions, um, you know, especially for the road team. You're going on the road. There's going to be a it's going to be a very electric crowd. Um, if you can just sustain drives, it's a, it's a lot easier to turn around and hand the ball off and get six yards than it is to try to drop back and look for an open receiver and toss the ball through the air. And then they got to catch it. So if you can just turn the ball, turn around and hand the ball off and get chunks yards, it's easier on your offense. It takes the crowd out of it. It wears down on the defense. Um, So I do think that whoever wins the rushing battle is going to win the game, but I think it's going to be a close game throughout. So that doesn't tell the full story. And we'll get into some of that throughout the show. Well, I think the interesting thing too, is if Michigan can run the ball again, hearkening back to Joel Klatt, he he thinks that Michigan's going to have no problem running the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, He he said, don't necessarily anticipate 250 yards, but they're going to get, 
they're going to get theirs. If they're able to run the ball in Wisconsin, they can run the ball on anybody. Uh, yeah. And they got over 100 yards against Wisconsin. So anticipate that. But it's got to be – it would be demoralizing, right, for Michigan State if Michigan – is able to run the ball that's kind of in a way what started to demoralize wisconsin was that this is a team that wasn't letting anyone do anything you know this was a team that that had given up essentially nothing to anyone given that notre dame was in the negative essentially and and uh you know penn state couldn't do anything with any of their backs once michigan came into town it was the first time that they were getting kind of pushed around up front and I think that's when you talk about the run game that obviously also means the trench play. And I think that's where Michigan has a decided advantage on both sides of the ball. I think that even though Michigan state's defensive line is very good so far, we've seen Michigan's offensive front being able to handle anything that's thrown at them. Uh, this is certainly going to be a different animal. This is the biggest pass rush that uh, Michigan will have seen. But like you said, if they if they're running the ball, that's going to neutralize that quite a bit. Uh, I'm curious to to what you have to say about trench warfare in this game. Not only when you look forward to wh- who we're actually going to see out there, but you've been a part of it being a tight end that has played in this matchup, and you played in some of the more terrifying ones in the the back when Michigan State was just wrecking everybody in the trenches, no less. I mean, here's the truth: is th- this game is different. Now, I, I, you know, I had a chance to talk to some of the players this week, and, and you know, what I told them is, listen, and this is the truth, all right? We're, no matter what we say, it's not going to change. When the ball carrier on the Michigan team is running and he gets tackled, and there's a gang of Michigan State Spartans on top of him, you know, there's some foul play going under the pile. There's ankle twisting. There's nut grabbing. You know, they're digging in your eyes, and the refs aren't going to throw the flag. That's just the reality of it, especially when we're on the road. That's the nature of this rivalry. So the big boys up front are going to need to follow the ball carrier, start tossing guys off. It's us versus them mentality this week. Anytime someone gets tackled, we should have a bunch of Wolverines trying to help each other up. Now the trench warfare matters because in a rivalry game, in a game like this, you're battling for Michigan. The team that wins the physical battle and plays, you know, really just more physical up front is going to win. You know, when you look at a pass play, a lot of things can go wrong to make that play, you know, unsuccessful. A quarterback can be inaccurate. All it takes is just a receiver to drop it, or you can just bat the ball down as a defender. In order to stop the run, you need to have completely disciplined run fits. You need to not only have that, the linebackers have to be fitting the right hole at the right time. And then not only that, they have to make the tackle and stop a running back in his tracks. Well, what our running backs have done so well this year is not just when they get met with contact, oftentimes they're falling forward. And oftentimes when they're stood up, we've seen it a couple times this year where the entire team seems to push and push and get those extra yards. So um, there's going to be, you're, you're going to need to get some of those dirty, unclean yards where it's going to be, there's only two or three yards there and it turns to a seven, eight yard run. That's how you used to say, that's how you sustain drives. That's how you take the will of a, of a defense. And it, that's, what's really going to be interesting too, is just the fact that uh, you've got guys like Hassan Haskins that fall forward. They, you know, you, you can hit him. That doesn't mean you've got him. Uh, which also reminds me of the task on the other side of the ball, which is containing Kenneth Walker, the third, because he doesn't necessarily fall forward. What he does is he makes guys miss. He's out of his 997 total yards. It's 600 and plus is yards after carry, which is the insane stat. So uh, are, we've seen two teams able to contain Kenneth Walker. Are you confident that Michigan's going to be able to do the same thing? You think that Mich- that's going to be a little bit different, especially with the rivalry game? Uh, like, wh- wh- how do you see that matchup going? Well, that's going to be the key to the game. And when you look at Michigan State's film, is Kenneth Walker has been able to extend plays and create holes when they not when they haven't necessarily necessarily been there. Um, you know, def- he gets touched that initial contact. Sometimes he falls forward. Sometimes he just breaks the tackle and, and extends the play. He's a really, really talented uh, running back. Um, they also mix in some read options. The quarterback can run quite a bit. Um, but ultimately, I think what you're going to look for is, is Josh Ross. Now, you know, Josh Ross is a more of a traditional linebacker I look at um, where he's really, really physical. He's downhill. He's head first, and he's going to smack you in your mouth, you know. So if he can punish Kenneth Walker early in the game, he doesn't miss a whole lot of tackles. And when he does tackle, he's tackling to hurt you, you know. He's tackling to leave a bruise. Um, but what you need to do when you have a running back that breaks a lot of tackles, it's got to be a group group effort. 
you have to have multiple guys flying to the ball. You have one guy stand him up, and then you have more Michigan Wolverines coming to knock him back. And um, throughout the season, again, we, we talked about a little bit is there's a couple plays throughout the game where, you know, we've lost discipline, whether it's tackling, whether it's eyes. But if for the most part, Michigan's been pretty sound in their tackling and in their run fits. So um, if we can avoid making the big mistake this game, I think we have a really good matchup with our defense against their offensive front and our defensive tackling against Kenneth Walker. We're going to get to momentarily, we're going to get to the uh, perhaps the most daunting matchup, the strength on weakness. And I say that term weakness with, I'm not meaning like it's a weak point. It's just, it's maybe the weakest spot for Michigan on the defensive side of the ball. I, I don't think the, that it's necessarily weak. We're going to get to that momentarily, but This episode of Locked on Wolverines is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. Now, McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's a place where friends and family can come to reconnect. Jake Butt and I have been talking about, we actually haven't, but we we could talk about going and grabbing a couple couple McFlurries if they actually have, uh, you know, if we could, if we could get over there, find some time. It's a place for classmates can meet up for a study group knowing they'll have defendable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of French fries and McFlurries. And win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, and home team or the away team can come to recharge. It's a place where you can always look forward to stopping on a long road trip and rest your legs and refuel. Uh, You can do it after coming home from a Little League game. You can stop at McDonald's on your way home from the Michigan-Michigan State game. Connect to Wi-Fi when you need work done, which is what my old intern used to do all the time. I Literally, after every uh, home game, he would be like, all right, I'm going to go to McDonald's and use their Wi-Fi. Uh, birthday parties. You know, if you knew, ever know someone that works at McDonald's, there's so many different things that you can go to. So, anyway, why don't you head to your local McDonald's to refuel and reconnect? Uh, and you know what? I'm loving it. All right, Jake. So two things that scare me in this game. Kenneth Walker is actually not one of them. Uh, But uh, the one that I tease going into the break is the cornerbacks versus Peyton Thorne. And it's not necessarily just the cornerbacks. It's the fact that this is going to be a group of receivers that is certainly another level. Now, Nebraska has got a high flying offense, certainly. Uh, but you've got uh, Jalen Naylor and Jaden Reed. Uh, that's that's going to be a daunting, couple daunting receivers to go up against. And also, Peyton Thorne can make you pay if you lose contain. You know, you got everyone covered, but not spying the quarterback. Guess mm-hmm. who can take off and get the first down that way, make a big play. Uh, and trickeration. That's another thing that Michigan State loves to do. They've been doing it all year. You know there's things saved up for this game. What do you see when you – when you, You've seen some Michigan State games. Obviously, you know the Michigan defense. How do you see this matchup ensuing? Well, you said it is, is you know, just a touch on the trickeration. It seems that Michigan State, in, in a lot of their close games, in a lot of their big games, at least in one phase, sometimes multiple phases, they have a trick up their sleeve, whether it's a fake punt or a fake field goal. Um, they have some type of uh, misdirection on offense or, or some way to try to scheme a, a, an easy first down or an easy chunk play, which also leads to momentum, which matters in a rivalry game. Um, so, you know, Michigan, I'm looking for a veteran coach that's been around the NFL and coach McDonald to have these guys prepared, continue to emphasize eye discipline, because like you said, uh, Peyton Thorne reminds you a little bit of Martinez and his ability to extend plays and uh, make, you know, you know, kind of get outside of the pocket and, and make you pay. Um, so again, that's comes down to eye discipline. It comes down to understanding your assignment and trusting in completing that assignment from whistle to whistle um, and, and trusting the other 10 guys around you to do their job. Now, when it comes to the pass game, that is a concern. Last year, they really exposed us. And, and I felt like last year, the ball guys weren't even open. It just felt like they were tossing the ball up in the air and just our, we had just sun, such undisciplined, um, uh, an undisciplined back end in our defense that they were drawing you know, defensive pass interference is constantly just marching down the field with flags. I don't see that this year. And I don't see our defense putting ourselves in a situation that they found themselves in last year. We are able to mix in zone coverage. 
which is a lot easier and a lot lower likelihood of uh, drawing a DPI. And honestly, we were talking about it earlier. I think the secondary has taken a huge leap forward. Um, they are one of the better ranked secondaries in the, in the country um, in terms of overall grade. I think they're the five, fifth, fifth best overall secondary in the country by PFF. So um, I, I, am, I am confident in these guys, but I'm confident in the defensive unit as a collective whole. Even when there's been chunk plays throughout the game, they adopt this bend but don't break mindset. So as long as we're not giving up easy touchdowns and we're making Michigan State earn it and work for it, I think we're going to be all right. One of the interesting stats that uh, I've heard, uh, and I heard it from Joel yesterday, was the uh, that Michigan State's defense is one that has been, that tends to be on the field for a long time, mm -hmm. 80, eighty some plays a game ish. That's uh, the second most in I think he said the Power Five. So the other end, Michigan needs to sustain drives. One of the ways that it's going to do that is through not just running the ball, but you get into a third, third and long, third and manageable, but not quite, you know, hand the ball off type territory. Cade McNamara is going to have to throw the ball. Now this theoretically is the worst pass defense that Michigan will have faced uh, outside of, I think, NIU. Um, I, I could be wrong on that, but I know it is among the worst that Michigan has faced. The outside is there for the taking, but it's up to Michigan to do it. How confident are you based off of, I mean, we, I, I feel like we live game to game, but how confident are you that uh, Cade McNamara is going to be able to hit guys downfield? Because doing what we saw last week, as, as much as you and I don't have a problem with what happened last week, it, you ain't going to win this game with the game that you had a week ago. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to find a way to, to get completions, um, especially with everybody in the world knows what our brand of football is in Michigan State, absolutely knows that as well as anybody, is we're going to be a run-first offense. I do think we're going to have to have success in the run game. That is going to open up some opportunity in the pass game. Um, you know, Michigan fans, let's support our quarterback, Cade, this week. Um, we need him, all right? So let's not, <laughs> let's not rip on him. Let's support him and encourage him um, because we do need him. Um, but I am confident. I am confident. I'm, I'm confident. I think one thing we could do this week is, and we saw it in the Nebraska game was get some of the tight ends involved. Um, some of those easy intermediate passes in the five to 10 yard range are a little bit easier to complete. They're a little bit easier to catch. They kind of settle your quarterback into the game a little bit. So if you can have a good run game with, and connect on some of these intermediate passes, just taking a couple shots, if we can connect, we don't need to connect on all of them, but you know, those, those, you know, runs and intermediate passes are going to open up the back end. Um, and we're just going to need to hit on a couple of them to really break this game wide open. Now, I want to touch on something you said in the first segment that I found interesting. I, I wanted to ask it back then, but uh, figured might as well ask it now. Uh, you mentioned all of the extracurriculars that happen in the game. That seems like it's endemic to this game and this game only. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's relatively one sided, if I'm not mistaken. Can, can you talk about what that's like in the rivalry? And, and is it is it something that really just comes just from Michigan State or both sides do it? Or yeah, do, does it even happen in Ohio State? It doesn't seem like there's as much nastiness in the Ohio State game as this particular game. Isaiah, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't. You know, and I played, you know, I grew up in Columbus. People would think I'd hate Ohio State. I actually hate Michigan State 100 times more. And I really don't use that word hate too often. I played in the, you know, was part of the Denver Kansas City Chiefs rivalry, the Denver Oakland Raiders rivalry, big, big NFL rivalries. This one stands out as a game where it needs to be addressed throughout the week of what's going to happen underneath that pile. Um, I'll share this with you. I won't, I won't name any names, but going into my senior year, there was a Michigan State player. I won't even name the position that through a, through a friend reached out and let me know that they had a bounty on my knee. They, there was a bounty on my knee. They were going to try to injure me that week. Um, and something happened to him that year. Um, you know, he, he didn't happen to be in that game. And, uh, but, but as I was running on the field, he was in street clothes. So he reminded me, Hey, we got a bounty on that knee today. And that's the kind of thing that you have to understand when you're playing Michigan state. Listen, no one's coming to save you, especially when you're on the road, the refs aren't going to save you. They really never do for Michigan. Anyways, we haven't had a, a, a lopsided officiating crew in our favor um, since I've been at Michigan, since I've been a fan of Michigan. Um, but that's just the reality of, of the beast of going into Spartan Stadium and playing the Michigan State Spartans. They just got it out for us, and that's okay because we got it out for them too. 
that's you have to adapt that mindset of it's us against the world man every single guy on that sideline has to be communicating with each other everybody in the huddle you have to really play for the love of your brothers next to you man and, and be aware of that and, and and play as a unit you know when you're when you're running back gets tackled can the whole O line come as a unit like a convoy of protection help them up off the ground and bring them back to the huddle because there is some foul play going on underneath the underneath the pile yeah, and you never know what's going to happen, and you got to watch out for injuries. You got to watch out for if you're an alignment on either side. You got to watch out for guys going after the knees. If you're on the offensive line, watch out for uh, Jacob Panashuk, who's long been known for his extracurricular activities. It's mm -hmm. been an on-running theme. It's not even just against Michigan. It's just something that's the type of player he is. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll be it'll be interesting hopefully not in a bad way come Saturday. All right. We're going to get into our predictions and final thoughts here in just a moment before we do, I got to tell you a little something about BetOnline.ag, uh, except for my, my thing crashed apparently. So I don't have it up, but I, I will momentarily, but uh, you know, with football going on again, I mean, we're, we're in the thick of the season. Everyone's paying attention. Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface with even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. So head to betonline.ag, sign up today, receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Don't forget to use the promo code locked on to receive said bonus. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. Now, I don't need a script for the second one because I know all about Built Bar. I love Built Bar. Uh, I have bought dozens of boxes of my own volition. Uh, I, as I promised Jake, it's at some point this year before the season's out, I'm going to get you a box of something, or at least we'll start with, I'll give you a couple bars and we'll find out what you like. But nonetheless, it is, if you don't know what Bilt Bar is, it is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It's high protein, low calorie, low carb. I can be a glutton and have two at a time. And guess what? It's still lower calorie, higher protein than going out and getting a metrics big 100, which used to be my go-to as a meal replacement when I was a little bit more adamant about getting to the gym and such. Uh, but nonetheless, trust me, you got to try Built Bar. Uh, go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order, just like I do. That's Built.com, promo code LOCKED15. All right, let's finish her out here in our preview for Michigan State. Jake, I know I, I, I'm I don't normally ask this open-ended of a question, but I know you've got some thoughts that I haven't necessarily led you into when it comes to this game. So what am I missing when it, when it comes to a game of this magnitude, uh, whether it be just the, the heightened, uh, what have you with both college game day and Fox big noon, uh, kickoff are there. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be filled with different notable people. It's the biggest game in all of college football and it's Michigan state. Uh, in a way it's almost a shame that it, Michigan State's the one that gets that, you know, because I feel like we want to we want to pretend like they're they're you know that they don't matter that much. But what what are some of your, I know you have some thoughts that I haven't touched on. Maybe I'm wrong. You can say that no, we covered everything. But if you have anything else that you that I just haven't touched on, let me know right now. Well, thank you. I mean, I understand this, Isaiah. Is you cannot downplay this moment. You cannot pretend that this is a number another game, or you cannot pretend that. You know, that you're just going to go out there and, and, and play just as you have the last weeks, as good as Michigan has been playing. This is why you commit to the University of Michigan. You know, when you're a recruit and you're picturing what it's going to be like to play, you know, in the winged helmet, you come here to this university to be on the big stage, to be competing in big games, to, to be nationally recognized. This is the game you work so hard for. This is why you wake up at 5 a.m. in the offseason and walk through the Michigan snow in order to get to your 6 a.m. lift. This is why you prepare so hard. This is why, you you know, you play your game on Saturday and you're in there working out on Sundays. So you can go and perform at a high level in this game. And this game absolutely is different. It's a rivalry, but it's a rivalry built on hatred. We don't like them. They don't like us. 
our fans don't like their fans and their fans don't like us. All right, it's going to be a fist fight. And, and I think we all understand that. I think the guys in the locker room understand that. Now, maybe you'd want to downplay the game if your team didn't have the talent, if you didn't have the scheme or you didn't have the coaching, if you weren't confident in, in your ability to go out there and win this game. But we're ready for this moment. You know, everything I've seen this season is, is just continued steps forward. Um, a guy like Aiden Hutchinson, why did he come back? You know, why is he playing right now? I feel his passion when he takes the field. I mean, you can see tears in his eyes when he's out there. You see blood in his eyes. Um, you know, the O-line, the way they're playing, the running backs, the passion that they're running with right now. Uh, Coach Harbaugh, he seems to be like an entire different person. Back to the, back to the Coach Harbaugh that we know and love. Um, so ultimately, the success of this program and the future of this program, there is a lot riding on this game, all right? Whether we win or lose, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, you know, it's, it's a hundred percent on it, but if you do, if you can manage to win this game and I'll challenge them to not only go win this game, but can you go in there and rip the hearts out of Michigan state in their own stadium? Can you take their will and break them? Um, that's the sign of a Michigan program that lets Michigan state know that you are a little brother and you always will be, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not. And I think we have the talent. I think we have the scheme. I think we've been executing at that high level, but I do think Michigan is very capable of going in there and putting out that type of performance where we can really shock the nation. I think we're, we're right there on the verge, but this is the opportunity to say we're going to do it against a top-ranked team on the road that we can shock the nation. So I'm excited for these guys' opportunities. I'm excited for what this game means. These are the most fun games to play in, and I'm glad it's on the road. There's something about a hostile environment. Like, make no mistake about it. You have no friends in that stadium. So go out there and have fun with that. Have fun being the villain. Have fun sending all those little kids home crying to mom and dad. Why did our team lose, you know? Rip those guys' heart out and ruin their season, man, because that's what they deserve. And you know what? Uh, I, I love the hearkening back to little brother to just for the sake of I was in school with Mike Hart and who is now on the, the coaching staff. I know he's distanced himself from that title, but you can't distance yourself too much, Mike. You're the one who came up with it. Yeah. And it's the reason why the rivalry has gotten so amplified. I mean, it was already amplified, but it got that much more. So, um, Jake, you're one of the few people, like not one of the few. I, I took predictions, of course, from you and 14 former players. I pretty, I think pretty much all of them, not all of them, but pretty much all of them had been your teammates at one point in time or another. Um you were one of the few people that did have a little bit more of a point disparity uh, favoring Michigan. All of you picked Michigan. I'm not surprised by that, but you did have a, uh, a 14 point disparity. So tell me your score. Tell me why you think Michigan's going to win by said score. Yeah. Now my lines moved a little bit. I think Michigan state, you know, I'm going to give credit to their offense. I think they're going to end up having 13 points this week. I think they're going to be able to get one touchdown, steal one on us. They'll be able to sustain some drives and have two field goal opportunities. But I just, I think this Michigan defense, if we go out and do what we're capable of, and I think the guys understand this moment, just like we said, I think they understand what's at stake and what they need to do to execute. So I think they will, Michigan state will have success, but it's got not going to be a dominant performance by any stretch of the ma uh, manner. And I think I'm going to have Michigan 28 to 13. All right. So we give up a touchdown and a couple field goals. I think we score four touchdowns. Maybe we can get to 31. Moody's always reliable. So if he's out there kicking, you trust that you're going to get three points. Um, but frankly, Isaiah, I think we're a better team. I think we are. I think we have more talent. I like our scheme better and I like our camaraderie better, but it is a rivalry. It is a Michigan state rivalry where Lord knows anything can happen. So that's what I'm expecting to happen. That's what I hope will happen. But man, anything is on the table at this point. I don't care how we do it as long as we win. I would say that Michigan's more, been more consistently dominant than Michigan State. Uh, certainly, Michigan State has dominated Youngstown State. They played extremely well. I won't go as far as saying dominated Northwestern, but they they certainly were by the end of the game. I guess kind of similar to Michigan. Michigan played Northwestern. Well, Michigan played very well against Northwestern in the first half and then dominated the second half. Michigan's dominated more often than not this year. 
even even though people complain about different things, and I know it's because you're looking forward to you want a uh, really good point by Doug Karsh on 97 won the ticket. He said Michigan fans are looking at every game as if uh, like they're coming away and say, saying, is that good enough to beat Ohio State or is it not? Mm-hmm. This week, it doesn't matter if it's good enough to beat Ohio State. All that matters is if it's good enough to beat Michigan State because mm-hmm. you got to beat Michigan State in order to to get through to that next one. Uh, so I, I think that my score prediction is a lot closer. I'm, I'm predicting the same score as last year, but flip it, 27 to 24 Michigan. Uh, I, I think that there is a possibility that it's going to be that close. I think it's probably a strong possibility it's going to be that close, but the until Joel Klatt scared me, I, I was getting to the point where I was thinking it, it could be just like Wisconsin, that the game could be pretty much the same as Wisconsin. Maybe add a – except for instead of having a touchdown super late because a four-string quarterback throws an interception in the red zone, uh, maybe they get that, you know, in regulation. I think Michigan State's going to start out fast – I think Michigan's going to find themselves down early, so it's going to be about how they respond. You know that they're going to script some things that, based off of what they've seen that they th- think that they can take advantage of with Michigan. The good news is Mike McDonald has shown that he can make those in-game adjustments, and if something's working for you at one point, it's not going to work for you for many drives. So uh, I, I'm still sticking with my 27-24. I'm not super confident in it, <laughs> but – I still think that uh, Michigan comes away with a victory. I don't see in my mind's eye Michigan coming away with a loss. I kind of had a weird feeling going into last year. I don't have that same feeling this year because I think this game is more important to Michigan. And before any idiot Spartan fans watch this and, and say like, oh, yeah, of course, because Michigan, you're so arrogant, it's more important. No, I think it's more important to Michigan because they lost last year. Mel Tucker's first year, Jim Harbaugh, not necessarily on the actual hot seat, but at the same time with the, the new contract, getting half the salary, uh, I, I, it's, it's more imperative for Michigan to get wins in games like this than it is Michigan State, right? There are consequences mm-hmm. if Jim Harbaugh doesn't win this game. Not mm-hmm. that he's going to be fired. I don't think that's, that's not saying that, but there are consequences. So the way we took the field last year against Michigan State and the guys that have touched on this this week, we owe those dudes one, man. We owe those dudes one. You can never give less than 100% when you play Michigan State. And last year, I felt we fell short. If it is a close game, Isaiah, and it very much could be, I'm looking for special teams to be a big difference maker. If it's if people are, if it's close, if offenses are struggling to get in the end zone and score points, I'm looking for special teams to be the difference. Can you win the field position battle? Can you steal some points on kickoff, kickoff return, and in the in the uh, field goal phase of the game? I just had bad flashbacks. You talking about special teams? That, that, you were right there in front of me. me. I wasn't even thinking of it. Now I'm. <laughs> I, I watched you floor. chasing him down. Ugh. It was because that all happened right in front of me. Can I tell you something about that? What happened Please. right then? So I'm standing on the sidelines with another reporter, right? I'm an intern at that point. So like I'm wearing my heart on my sleeve for the most part. I did not go to the post game press conference. That was like my, what, like fifth game, maybe fourth game covering Michigan. And I think that was my fourth game covering Michigan. And uh, the reporter says to me after the defense made the stand, he turned to me and said, that's it. Michigan wins. And I turned and looked at him. Maybe this was a jinx. Maybe I needed some wood to knock on, but I turned him, turned him and said, unless they fumbled snap. And then I watched it all happen in front of me on the 10 yard line. Uh, still like you can see me in the video, just like, I mean, my back, at least I'm just like, what, you know, and I, I have a blurry picture of you <laughs> that I think that's my last picture is a blurry picture of you. Do you so. want me to, so, so to walk you through what happened there and, mm-hmm. and how it all happens, we're sitting on the sidelines it's it's Jim Harbaugh. We had lost to Utah earlier in the year, but this was our win, man. We Michigan's back. Michigan's back. We got Coach Harbaugh. We're gonna go to the Big Ten Championship. We're back. We're we're getting ready to celebrate. So we were anticipating punting the ball and them getting in Hail Mary offense. Mm. I was actually the jump ball guy. I you know, uh they wanted me to go in on defense and bat the ball down. So the defensive coordinator, DJ Durkin, pulls me aside. Get ready for Hail Mary defense. Get ready. You're gonna be in. I'm like, all right, cool. So we're in that spread punt. And typically, you know, you have two guys out wide. We call them gunners. They're out wide where the receivers normally are. 
And then Michigan State normally would have one guy over each guy out wide and a punt returner out back. Well, I'm sitting in the shield. No guys out wide, no punt returner, all 11 guys up front. So we have the long snapper, the punter, and two gunners. That leaves seven guys to block 11 Michigan State dudes. We had no check to bring them down. And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, man, Blake, you better get this punt off. The ball gets snapped, and you don't know what's going on behind you, but I see way too many white jerseys running that I'm used to. And you hear a gasp out of the crowd, like, <gasps> and I look around, and not, all I see is the ball bounce off the ground, bang, pop right into his hands, and there's just a convoy of eight dudes running down the field. So I'm running, I'm running, and it's bang, bang, play. I hit him right on, like, about the two-yard line. I, try, I knew he was going to fall in. I tried to punch the ball out to maybe cause a fumble. And I land on top of him. I separated his hip, so he wasn't getting out scotch free. Damn it, but I got separated his hip. But I remember sitting there with my eyes closed. And it's wild that energy really can't be measured, but that stadium, the energy shifted, and it was so quiet. 110,000 people were so shocked. Except for I will one never thing. forget that moment. Except for one thing, and I forgot that I had three cameras on me, and I wish that I would have. Uh, turned one of them on to video. I was just as shocked as everyone, but watching the Michigan State players go around and yell profanity and flipping off the fans, it was like, you know, that's my first time being on the sideline for a Michigan-Michigan State game, and I was just like, they are not taking this. They they are sore winners, you know? But, uh, and I actually walked up. Rivalry, man. I actually walked I up to we're one. sore winners this week. Yeah, I mean. I walked up to a, uh, a Michigan state lineman, the balls on this guy here because he was sitting there yelling, flipping off of fans and the cart was coming out for Jalen Watts Jackson. And I was like, yeah. why don't you stop swearing at Michigan fans and go and check on your boy that just won you the game, man. You know, like, yeah, but truly that was the wildest play I've ever seen. Mm. And the fact that I was a part of it and the guy that tackled him in the end zone is just mind blowing. So we owe their ass one, man. Let's get that bad taste out of our mouth. We got to just, we got to take their will this week, man. And I'm excited to watch. Well, we got to get the bad taste out of the mouth for the fake, the sake that we ended the podcast on this note. But anyway, we, we are reminding you, we both are picking Michigan to win this one. Uh, we both think that that'll happen. So uh, it seems like a lot of people in the country also do. I think Michigan's got a better team. Jake does as well. So we will end on that note. Anyway, thank you, Jake, for joining. As always, we'll be back uh, probably Monday or Tuesday with X's and O's. And so look forward to that. Anyway, for the Mackey Award-winning tight end, Jake Butt, I am Isaiah Hole. We will talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.